Hey guys, I am back with the long-awaited video in which I'll be comparing 15 different notebook brands, showing you all their features as well as pen tests. There's a lot to go through, so let me start by thanking Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. There's also a giveaway at the end, so let's jump right into it. The first notebook we'll be talking about is the Leuchtturm 1917, which is the company that makes the official bullet journal notebook, so I'll be using it as reference for all the others. It's a true A5 hardcover notebook that comes in tons of different colors and it has an elastic closure to secure the notebook. As you open it up, there's a space for you to write down your information in case you lose it, and then there are two or three pages dedicated for the index. The regular version comes with two bookmarks, while the official bullet journal comes with three of them. At the back, you have eight perforated pages that you can easily rip out without damaging the notebook. And finally, there's an expendable pocket at the back. The paper is a cream color, and you can see it here compared to a pure white background. The dots are dark but very small, so they're not bothersome. As far as the pen test goes, the paper is 80 GSM, so the ghosting is very obvious, and you can clearly see what you wrote on the other side. The Leuchtturm takes watercolors pretty well, but only if you use a minimal amount of water, because it actually doesn't take much for the color to bleed through and for the paper to wrinkle. There was minimal feathering from the fountain pen, however, I did see the ink seeping through to the other side. The next notebook we're going to be looking at is the Moleskin, and they come in both hard or soft covers. This one is thinner than a true A5, and you can actually hold it in one hand pretty comfortably. As you open it up, there's a page to write down your information again, and then it goes straight into the dotted pages, so there's no index. The notebook also has one bookmark and there's also a pocket in the back. The pages aren't numbered and here you can see how similar the Moleskin and the Leuchtturm are in terms of paper color as well as the opacity of the dot grid. The Moleskin actually has the thinnest paper out of all the notebooks, it's 70 GSM, so there's a lot of ghosting as well as bleed through from almost every single marker, not as much from the watercolors but definitely from the fountain pen as well. Up next, we have the iconic version of the Scribbles That Matter notebook. This one is known for its embossed doodles all over the cover, but there's also a pro version which has a simple cover. Apart from the elastic closure, this one also has a pen loop on the side. The first page has a space for your contact details, and then there's a page for the key, and three pages for the index. It has two bookmarks, a pen test page at the end, and the pocket in the back has the same doodles as the covers. The color of the pages is a bit lighter than the Leuchtturm, so it's more ivory. The dots are light gray color and they're not too distracting. The paper is very smooth and it's 100 GSM, so there's not as much ghosting, but it's still noticeable. The watercolor started bleeding through the back side of the page a little bit and the feathering from the fountain pen was minimal. Moving on to the next notebook, which is the Dingbats, and each color notebook has a different animal embossed on the front cover, and the rest of it has a leather texture. This notebook has a very secure elastic closure and a pen loop to the side, and as you can see here, it is a bit wider than a true A5 size. As you open it up, you will see a pattern with the footprint of the animal that's on the front cover and a space for your information. There is no index, just a single bookmark and a pocket in the back. Something to note about the pages is that they are all perforated, but you shouldn't worry about ripping them out on accident because they're pretty secure. The pages are an ivory color and the dots are dark, but quite small, so they're not too distracting. They aren't numbered, but instead they have the Dingbats logo on each corner. The paper is 100 GSM, just like the scribbles that matter, so in terms of ghosting, they are very similar, and as long as you don't use too much water, the watercolors don't bleed through. Next up, we have the Limome notebook, which is quite thick because of its cover. It has an elastic closure and a pen loop at the spine. The front page has a very minimal design for your information, and then it goes straight into the dotted pages, so it has no index, but it does come with a bookmark and a pocket in the back. Something worth mentioning is that the stitching is very obvious in certain places. That's because the notebook lays very flat, so the stitching is more noticeable. 
Another thing is that the pages are kind of stiff in a way, so you can see how sometimes they just stay up like that. The pages are cream and the dots are really large and dark, you can see them in comparison to the Leuchtturm, so I think some people might find them a bit too distracting. The pen test really surprised me actually, but that's probably because the pages are 120 GSM, so there's noticeably less ghosting than in all the previous notebooks. The watercolor barely even showed through, which is great, however, there was a bit more feathering with this notebook, so it might not be as fountain pen friendly. Next are the Nuna notebooks, which come in really cool designs and patterns, and some of them even have those designs on the edges of the paper. The covers are made from different materials, they're not hard covers, so they're probably not as travel friendly as the other ones. None of these two sizes are true A5, one is a bit smaller and the other one is a bit larger. This is actually the only notebook that doesn't lay perfectly flat unless you open it somewhere in the middle, so that's something to keep in mind. The notebooks are pretty minimal because they don't have an elastic closure and they also don't come with any bookmarks or back pocket. The paper is almost white and the dots are really light, but the dot grid is actually 3.5mm instead of the standard 5mm, so it definitely takes some getting used to. Even though the paper is 120 GSM, the pens show through as if the paper was a bit thinner, so it's comparable to the 100 GSM notebooks. It did too well in the watercolor test, but the fountain pen ink feathered quite a bit and it was starting to bleed through just a tiny bit. On to the next one, which is the notebook from Archer and Olive. This one has a cloth finish with some gold embossing and it also has an elastic closure. It's a bit thinner than an A5 and it actually has the same dimensions as a moleskin. The first page is dedicated to your contact details and then it only has 112 pages, one bookmark and a pocket in the back. The pages aren't numbered, they are cool white and the dots are the darkest out of all the notebooks. This notebook has the thickest pages of them all, they are 160 GSM which is twice as thick as the Leuchtturm, so it's no surprise that there's absolutely zero ghosting or bleeding and the same goes for the watercolors without the page even wrinkling. So it's safe to say that this one can take pretty much anything you want to use on it, but it's also the second most expensive. The next notebook is from Rhodium Mines and this one has a very nice and soft texture on the cover. It opens up with an elastic closure, the first page is for your contact details and then it goes straight into the dotted pages so there's no index. It has two bookmarks of different colors and then a pocket in the back with two cards that you can use as a pen test. The pages are ivory and the dots are really dark so they're very noticeable. The pages are 100 GSM so just like the others there is ghosting but not as much as in the Leuchtturm. It also passed the watercolor test and the feathering was minimal. Next we're going to be looking at the Baron Fig Confident Notebook. This one is a hardcover with a cloth finish. It's a little bit smaller than an A5 and it doesn't have an elastic closure. The first page has a minimal design, the notebook does come with one bookmark and there's no back pocket. The pages are ivory and the dots are very light but they're the biggest size out of all the notebooks so that's something to keep in mind. This notebook has 90 GSM paper but the pen and watercolor test results were actually comparable to the scribbles that matter. Something interesting though is that the dots kind of show through the markers and it almost looks like the markers can't write on the dots. The Rodia notebooks are pretty popular. The one that I have is a silver web notebook and it has the logo embossed on the front cover. Now my notebook has ruled pages but I wanted to test the paper anyways because it's the same as the dotted one. The notebook also has one bookmark and an expandable back pocket. The pages are the most yellow out of all of these notebooks and the dots on the dotted version are pretty dark as well. Rhodia paper is 90 GSM so there is ghosting but still a little bit better than the Leuchtturm and I have to say it is the smoothest paper ever so there's absolutely no feathering from the fountain pen and the writing experience is amazing. Moving on to the Essentials Notebook, this one is one of the most affordable notebooks but it's really good quality nonetheless. 
So it has an elastic closure, no index, one bookmark, and a pocket in the back. The pages are ivory and the dots are very light, so they're not distracting at all. The paper is 100 GSM, so the ghosting is just as expected, but one thing to note is that the fountain pen bled through the other side most out of all of these notebooks. Next we have the Forbes notebook, which has a very clean and minimal design, and it has an elastic closure as well as a pen loop. On the inside, it has a contact details page, one bookmark, and a back pocket. The pages are ivory and the dots are quite dark to the point where some people might find them distracting. The pages have a space for the date on each corner. They are 80 GSM just like the Leuchtturm, so the ghosting is very similar and the fountain pen also bled through just a little bit. Next up we have this guy, which is from Little More. This one also has the same type of doodles on the cover as the scribbles that matter. You can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the A5, but it's packed with different features, starting with an elastic closure as well as a pen loop. On the inside, it has four pages for the key and four pages for the index. There are two bookmarks and it comes with a few stickers, but there's no pocket in the back. There are dotted pages throughout and blank pages at the back and at the end there are 8 perforated pages which can be ripped out in business card sizes. The pages are ivory, the dots are a medium darkness and the page numbers are in the bottom center. The 100 GSM paper held up really well with all the pens so overall I was really pleasantly surprised by this notebook. The second to last notebook is from Karst and this one has a simple design with their logo in the corner. Something that's very unique about this notebook is that the pages are actually made of stone instead of paper, which is a very interesting concept. They feel incredibly smooth and they're actually waterproof and tear resistant, so of course I had to put these claims to the test and they hold true. The downside is that the ink takes much much longer to dry, so there's a higher risk of smudging even after you close the notebook. The pages are somewhere in between white and ivory, and the dots are really tiny. As far as the pen test goes, the ghosting is extremely obvious and you can clearly see to the other side. Because the pages are waterproof, that means that nothing's gonna bleed through, however, the ghosting is really really obvious. Something else I've noticed is that some inks actually change color over time and I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but that's definitely something important to mention. And finally, the last notebook we're going to talk about is from Muji. Now obviously this is a spiral bound notebook, but it does work great as a bullet journal as well. So the cover is just a really thick car stock and then there's an elastic band to keep it closed. Inside, it's very simple and basic, it just has 70 dotted pages and no other features. The pages are ivory and the dots are a medium size and darkness. I couldn't find any information about the paper weight, but it kind of feels like 80 GSM, and so again there is ghosting and also a little bit of bleed through from the fountain pen. Alright guys, so we just went through all of these notebooks and before I show you my favorites, please just remember that it really comes down to your personal preference and I hope this video made your decision on picking a notebook a bit easier. I kind of had to speed through everything because there were so many, but I've put together a table with all of the info so that you can compare all the notebooks and you will find a link to it in the description. So my personal favorites for an everyday bullet journal would be either the Scribbles That Matter, the Dimbats, Nuna, or the Essentials Notebook. I also really love the Archer and Olive because it can handle any media, and for a more portable notebook, I would choose the one from a little more. Okay, so before I get into the giveaway details, I'd like to tell you a bit more about Squarespace since they were kind enough to sponsor this video. I'm always happy to work with them because I had such a pleasant experience when I created my architectural portfolio. They're basically an all-in-one platform where you can create a beautiful website regardless if it's an online shop, a blog, a portfolio, or anything else. 
I personally had no experience in web design and let me tell you, I was stressed enough as it is, but it's so easy and intuitive to use that I was able to create my website without the added stress of learning web design. So if it sounds like something you'd be interested in, then you can go to squarespace.com slash mylifeinabullet, which will get you a free trial as well as 10% off your first purchase. All right, so now finally for the giveaway, there are going to be three winners and I'm going to be giving away a notebook of their choice. So all you have to do to enter is leave a comment below telling me which notebook you'd like to try out and why. That's basically it, but all the info will be down below as well as links to all the notebooks. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys.